Two vehicle TC will need multiple paramedics. Code three emergent. How's everyone feeling? You guys okay? No. Just hang tight. Paramedics and firefighters will be here. How is she? You got a pulse? We have one party not breathing, no pulse, appears deceased. Second party unconscious, heavy head trauma. Recommend we get a helicopter. This can't happen, man. I got, I got offers. I'm supposed to go to UCLA, man. Come on. There's some alcohol aboard one of the vehicles. This may be a DUI related crash. Drop the possible DUI. Drop the possible. Heavy head trauma. You all right? I don't know. She's not looking so good. But... Jaws of life. The patient is pinned and trapped. Oh, 
One party's being transported by AMR-97, Kaiser Antioch. Air one inbound making the landing. I think this driver is drunk. We need to do a DUI investigation. Clear. He's got no sensation from the about the belly button down. He's still, he still got a good respiratory rate. Sats are good, bottles are fine. Traumatic paralysis. Our uh, helicopter is inbound to Kaiser Deer Valley. Could you have a law unit respond there? We don't know if that patient will survive or not. And we're continuing our DUI investigation. You okay walking? You seem to be stumbling a little bit. Listen, Ty, as you can see, like this was a pretty big deal. People got seriously hurt. Let's be honest, how much you got to drink today? Nothing, man. I keep telling y'all, nothing, nothing. Okay. Any type of pills? Nah, man, nothing. I'm sober. Because, just being real with you, there's alcohol. You smell like alcohol. You're kind of stumbling all over the place, you know what I'm saying? It's important to be honest. I don't see any touch or bruises like most of these. Where can you feel me touching? Can you feel me touching here? No. What about here? No. Here? Yeah. Okay. What's your name? Ellen. Ellen. Nice to meet you. Is this your son? Yes. Alex? Yes. Alex was involved in a very serious car accident just now. From what we can gather, he has serious and critical injuries to his head and his brain. He's currently intubated, meaning there's a breathing tube that's helping him breathe. His injuries are very severe, and while I can't say for certain what the ultimate prognosis is, I'm afraid that it's going to be very poor given the degree of injury to his brain. So all I need you to do is blow as hard as you can for as long as you can until you hear a click, okay? Alright. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So this is a portable, portable alcohol One more time, okay? So Ty, you're, you're over the legal limit. You had too much to drink. Alright Ty, go and put your hands behind your back, please. You're under arrest for DUI. We're going to do another chemical test, but this is pretty serious. People are dead. Tom Ford dispatch. We have one in custody for DUI, causing the death of another.
you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. There's no easy way to say this, but I do need to let you know that your son Alex and Ali, your daughter, were involved in a terrible car accident. Right now, Alex is in the hospital with some serious injuries, but unfortunately, I'm very sorry to say that Ali did not make it. Tell me your side of the story. Can you tell me what happened? It was just, it was all a blur. I don't, I don't really remember what happened. I can't, I can't think right now. This is the matter of the state of California versus defendant Tiberius Campos Reese. Mr. Campos Reese, you have been found guilty on two felony counts. First count is for vehicular manslaughter with gross negligence. The second count is for felony driving under the influence with great bodily injury enhancement. We are here today for your sentencing. Do the people wish to be heard? Yes. Your Honor, we're here for the case of the defendant, Mr. Campos Reese who not only affected the lives of three innocent victims, but also of their family members. And with that in mind, one of the family members decided to write a victim statement. Your Honor, to completely articulate the impact that this death has had on my life is truly overwhelming and I believe impossible. I've written this victim impact statement in my head seemingly over a thousand times since the day the defendant decided he had a good amount to drink and chose to disregard my family member's life and the lives of other people on the road, the lives of his friends and his own. The emotional and physical impact that this incident has had has forced me to live a life I don't recognize, and I become a person I do not know. The incident left me vulnerable and scared to face my life without Allie by my side and forever saddened that she will never be able to realize her dreams. I also find it impossible to see that any part of my life has not changed because every plan I've ever made has been with the notion that Allie would be alive and with me. In the moments, weeks and months following the news of Allie being killed by a drunk driver, my mental and physical state drastically deteriorated. Within three weeks of Allie's death, my doctor prescribed anxiety and antidepressant medication, both of which I'm still taking. I have attended therapy sessions to deal with Allie's death. This helps me a little bit to live day by day. Therapy and medication help me fall asleep, but even in my dreams, I'm aware that Allie is dead. Often wake in the middle of the night or early morning feeling sadness in the pit of my stomach. This is how I start each and every day. We will have family gatherings, Christmas and Thanksgiving celebrations, once joyous and festive occasions now ruined because there is somebody missing. 
in an empty chair. We are able to smile and laugh together since Allie's death, but there is now a moment punctuated by passing thoughts of who should be here, smiling and laughing with us. Your Honor, I thank you for your time and consideration and for allowing me the opportunity to speak on Allie's behalf. And with that, Your Honor, due to the nature of this case, the people ask for the maximum sentencing of 10 years. Mr. Campos Reese, having been found guilty of the offenses charged, I sentence you to 10 years state prison. The choices you made on the day of this incident have forever altered the lives of everyone involved and have left a tremendous wound on this community. It is this court's hope your selfish and irresponsible actions will haunt you each day of your incarceration. And when you are given a second chance at life upon the conclusion of your sentence, that you forever remember the life you took and the life you injured and the families you shattered. At this time, bailiff, please take Mr. Campos Reese into custody and deliver him to the California Department of Corrections, where he will be housed from the sentence I have imposed. This matter is closed and this court is adjourned.